Greetings, my name is Michael Miller. This is a Michael Miller trademark training video out to you because you're watching. Thank you and welcome. It's meant for Michael Miller Pilates licensed affiliates, the Core New Core, and anyone studying or seeking to survive as an instructor. And beyond that, thrive. So I have to add in the final product, a student of the method, which is what this is directed towards, even though it's, it's, it, well, it's toward the survival of you as an instructor of Pilates. <clears throat> the sooner you learn what you're teaching others, the sooner you'll have it available for yourself. I know that's backward logic, and that's why I'm sort of dallying in that expression. Oh, I didn't finish my notes, but I'm so engrossed in this. All right, so how many titles? It seems like three, even though I only have one written down. It's not very prepared. But the, the first one and the biggest one, Comes, the title is Prep, as in Preparation, or Pilates, question mark. Just seeking to find a distinction between the two, or when you see something, for example, when you see something, how much does it look like Pilates? And how much does it look like preparation? Um, or, and then another part in that spectrum is how much does it look like something just made up on, it, on Pilates equipment? Or something movement in some other modality that's, that's put on Pilates equipment? And so it's such a vast spectrum. It's such a big tsunami. And there's so much multiplicity of representation. You know, how do you make sense of it all? So the example that I have that generates this broadcast today is how many times lately I've seen in my social media feeds um, a human being in a plank with their feet on the foot bar of a reformer and their forearms on the short box on the reformer. And so from that plank then, going out and in, articulating the, the forearms off of the shoulders. You with me on that? You're in a plank, you're down on your elbows, but you're on a box that has wheels and an attachment by a spring. And the only articulation is at the shoulder. Okay? So it's like, instead of being at a plank, making a plank dynamic insofar as being able to, to move with your forearms anchored and move on the, you know what I mean? Hope you do. When I see something like that, it, 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 it intrigues me and, and I get all kinds of different emotions. And then I ask, why do I feel that way about this exercise or what they're showing? For one thing, it's become familiar. It seems like it's at least three different sources. I've seen a demonstration of the body doing what I consider to be a, a pike position, meaning in, in Cornu perspective, five points on a line, articulating at the elbows, meaning that you're straight in your body from your ears to your ankles, and okay, so, 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 where am I going with this? I have this outline. Why do I feel this way? And why doesn't it feel like Pilates? Or, see, is it prep or is it Pilates? 
because in my world, that's control push up front on a second spring. And why do I bring up the second spring? So that the elbow supports right underneath the shoulder. So you made the range of the reformer long enough to accommodate the body. And if you're really long, then you'd want to accommodate further so that you don't put the, the so you don't put this part of your arm at an acute angle to the shoulder. This angle starts at 90 degrees and goes out from there, right? If you start it up in tension at an acute angle, the physics really work against you in a big way. Hmm. And so it's about a control push-up and, and the hands are holding the shoulder rest and the inhale takes you out and the exhale brings you back and as you go out, one straight leg lifts and then comes back as you return. And on the next out, another straight leg lifts up. A long curve extension. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. And it's a very much a whole body thing. And so in that regard, I'm talking to you as an instructor and coming into the scenario of this, it's your, it's, it's, you ask what they like to do and they go right over and they show you that. Okay. It's like, okay. And so my point is, as a Pilates instructor, whatever you see and come across is merely a grist for your mill that, that, applies a perspective, a point of view, and goes from there from the foundation that is presented to you. So, in this example, the legs are perfectly parallel, they're on the balls of the feet, but, and, and not connected. So I would take that exercise and go to a Pilates V to connect the heels. Why would that be? What's the target? Well, the control, because it's the name of Joe's book. And the means to that is Contrology develops the body uniformly. You know this, Joe's words. And in the pursuit of uniform, are these words that mean the same thing, whole body, which is much more common, I think, and older um, in tradition, that everybody knows that Pilates is a whole body exercise. Okay? And so I'm headed towards control push up front out on a second spring, so making sure the tension is at ease at 90. There you go, that's a good way of saying that. At ease at 90. And so that the move into spring tension makes an angle that's oblique, not obtuse, not acute. I meant to say obtuse and not acute. Open, you go away from, the angle gets bigger. You don't hang out in acute tension where two, your, your, the tension is like this between points. You know all this and with all your background in, in physical therapy and biology and biomechanics. You can explain that in detail. The first change I, I thought I'd make if I were there in that, or addition to, the expansion of, headed to see, 
what I see is a very universal shape of being in a plank and have that shape set up on a polite reformer. Okay? And there was some articulation of going in and out at the elbows and that being it. Okay? In that it's anchored at the elbow rather than at the wrist, assuming capability in the wrist. And see, that's where that whole setup is a great example of doing the plank in a dynamic way, in and out of spring tension, without having to be on your wrists. See? So in that regard, it's a, it's a modification to allow for a lack of capacity. Right? Closer to center. It takes out the end. It takes away the, the dynamic end point at the elbow and makes it a contact point as well. So you're in contact at your elbow. So. One of my questions, I want to pull myself through the screen, and I say, well, you know, why are you doing it that way? What are you doing? You know, who taught you that, and why are you putting that on film? And just to be curious, right, where did it come from? Because if you have original footage of that happening, either with Joe doing it or Joe's film doing it, that can be verified it's Joe's film, you know, then I'd, I'd way want to know that. And given that, I don't really think that's in Joe's expression of the reformer at all. Where did you pick up that exercise? And why do you highlight it? You know, are you, you know, are you aware that that's coming from somewhere as a derivative rather than what exists within the original body? Just wondering, see, is there original work? Then the other question is that when I see that, does anyone has anyone ever shown that human being? Control push up front in its expression in its full expression where the whole body is much more uniformly engaged than when you're anchored at the end point of the elbows. Okay? End point where, where a rotation happens, right? There's a rotation, an axis through your elbow. But then for me to you as an instructor, it's like, well, that, that way, if, somebody's, if somebody's holding a plank at home and you want to go beyond that plank at home and make it more dynamic, something you've got to listen to more and dive into, and the wrists are bad or it's too far away from center or for whatever, just to match the familiar with just so much little bit of dynamic spring tension, Sure, sure. But your, my job as a Pilates instructor is to pick my student up. I skate over to the edge of the frozen pond of Pilates and take them ice skating. And my job as an instructor is to help them not get hurt and not fall through the ice in which you fail to support yourself to the point where you get wet, right? That metaphor, if you will. So once I had breath coordinated to the effort that was already familiar, and I had the engagement of the Pilates V, metatarsals as a V, 
to heels and the contact point making tension in connection with the breath. Right, inhale out away from center, exhale home. I mean, when they can do all that, if they have wrists, and maybe way before that, but if they have wrists, you take the box away and go hands to shoulder rest, and then the reason I'm smiling is because in, in pursuit of the ideal, and recognizing how to make any exercise harder. I haven't talked about that hardly at all in forever. First of all, you add more weight. The, only way, the first way to make any exercise harder is to make the weight heavier. And it's being lifted. And the second way is further away from center. So if you want concrete examples on that, you go from, you go from Scissors to double leg lower lift. Those are two of Joe's exercises in his book. And they're in that order. Because first you're one leg at a time and then you're two legs at a time. And that's heavier. Okay? And that's the second way to make anything harder. Um, let's see, there's five, but I'm not, I haven't said it in a long time. More away, further away from center. Fewer contact points. So see, instead of being on your forearms, if you're on your hands on the shoulder rest, then you've removed the contact point of the elbow and the whole forearm. And now, so that's harder, fewer contact points. And change in tempo and change in tension. I know we're the last two, but I don't know what order I, I'm used to presenting them in. More weight, further away from center, fewer contact points. And in this regard, we're talking about doing a pike on the reformer. And I, where are you taking that towards and why? Well, why is because why you're taking, I'm taking them to the expression of uh, Control push up front. And we haven't talked about front. Do you know what front means? In the MMP world, front means facing gravity. Now, if that lines up with whatever you think front means front, great. And if not, then you have to change wherever, wherever, wherever I say front to mean the opposite of what you're used to. Because you're the one that has to make the translation. But control push up front means facing gravity. And that's why does that, okay, so why does that come before control push up? Because control push up is face up. It's prone, in, it's, it's supine in space rather than prone in space. And it's much harder to be in a line or to extend into a curve in extension than flexion, right? My experience. Um, so, I think when I started grinning was because in a different exercise, where it's the high bridge and both hands are on the shoulder rest and the feet are in a Pilates V on the, on the bar and so the body is supported at metatarsals and at heels of hands. A beautiful arch was happening for a student of mine with her mother way over in the corner of the studio in one of those rattan um, chairs that have this big round back to it. And it was done so masterfully, this high bridge on the, the reformer, a big extension exercise right at the end, that I went to fewer contact points. And one leg vertical came up like it was hanging on a string. And the carriage went in and out. And taking it further, because the capacity was there to go somewhere more, I asked for the opposite hand in attitude. That got the student's attention. 
because until that point, they were within a realm where they were doing what was familiar and was more directing what was doing rather than having to really listen to the the whole smeal to to reach for the control. And it was brief, but it was there. And really, by the time the one leg went up, everybody had stopped talking and looking out of the corner of their eye. And then when it went to attitude, it was a magical moment. And I share that with you because I was there, right there, with my hand ready to support her at her lower back if she had not accomplished it on her own and needed foundation. Right? So that was a lucky thing for me that I was able to be a big, strong spring of support in close proximity to the effort, but not so close to interfere with the expression of the control that came about. Because that can advise you can you can fall through, and your job as an instructor is to pay so much attention that your awareness of of what's going on is more sensitive to your students. That may be a big expectation, but at least you got to try to be there as a means of support for them to explore their range. There, I like the way I said that. Now to finish this off, I would want to see, or maybe I'll film someday, but I would want to say, okay, this seems to me to be plank on a reformer. And that's one kind of expression visually of here's an exercise out there in the world adapted to the reformer. And then I would want to see, well, if you really took that because of pursuit of whole body and, and left the ground of the endpoint at the ankles, at, at the elbows, into the push-up posture, and then people do their, their, their push-ups in all kinds of ways, but when you watch Joe do push-ups on film that's out there in social media, his elbows are right next to his body doing push-ups. So whether you're on the reformer or on the floor, one way I encourage you to be able to do them is with your elbows flush to your trunk, which all of that, what I see and I'm looking at, it causes so much emotion and reaction is great prep, great prep, and a great extension for where someone might be used to doing pike and want to come in and feel what it's like to be able to have that kind of dynamic interaction. Right? So it, my, the instructor meets the moment. And it's really great to at least know, for me, I think it's great for me, to have a, a clear understanding within myself of what I'm about as a Pilates instructor. And that the clarity that I have of that allows me to meet whatever the moment becomes. Because, why? Because, I'm sort of off on a different subject now, okay? So this is number two, and that's instruct, the inst instructors meet the moment. The instructor meets the moment. And as that meaning Pilates, and Pilates as meaning uniform, and that meaning whole body, if you've heard anything or been taught that Pilates is a whole body thing, we are on the same page, right? And, and I read that page pretty literally to the point where the pursuit of uniform engagement to get the development uniformly, 
control agent develops the body uniformly. You know, that's, that's just a key statement about how it does what it does. It develops the body uniformly. And an MMP If I mind, I want to race right ahead and say an MMP, that means uniform eccentric loading flowing through progressive patterns of movement, which is the definition of Pilates according to the MMP brand. But before all of that, just the idea of, of uniform engagement. You want more muscle contributing to the load you're trying to lift. All right? Something, see, and everything you say, I say as a teacher, hopefully you can translate as a sensation. And so lie down supine. Knees bent, feet flat, try to be at ease, right? Um, heads on the floor, and you have to be a normal, healthy being and talk to your doctor before you do anything. And this is very simple. Um, take your fingers and hold them down right above your pubic bone um, and press in, right? It's, it's, it's mushy down there, but just push in, press in there. And then feel what happens when you lift your head. <laughs> that always causes, can cause, such astonishment in people who have no inner sense of their body or connectedness of their body. And I say, okay, you felt something, right? And they go, yeah. And how do I do that then? I say, okay. Try to feel less under your fingers and still lift your head. Am I being clear on this? You okay with this? And so they go to lift their head and those muscles immediately go at fire. But you have to ask them, was it as big as when you weren't trying not to do it? And you're after a difference of sensation. And see, most people can lift their head without exclusively using their rectus abdominis, which is the muscle way down low that, <clears throat> and maybe you'll tell me that, oh, that's the different muscle. The point is that you can feel the sensation and that you made a difference by incorporating more musculature than just that underneath your fingers to lift the load. And that's Pilates. That's distributing the muscular effort to move your body as whole body as you can. And you may consider it sad or unfortunate or impossible to be true, but the means to that uniform engagement is through core new tension. To the point where it takes you out of locked knees and pointed toes, which is an affectation, I believe, from an exposure to dance. Whereas the real mat work in exploring it reveals the nature of it as a reflection to the physics that the choreography takes place in. It's like if you had a stage and it was had some kind of an elaborate stage and you were going to be make a dance on it, right? You make a dance based on the stage that you have. And in Pilates, Joseph Pilates choreographed a dance based on the stage that he had. And I have, and you have, because it's, it's reality, 
and the reality of survival and what it takes to survive. Remember that it's human nature to think as part of their nature. And in thinking, to want to divide things in two, because the nature of thinking is divisionary. It's why in the tarot cards, the sword deck of the suits of, of, of the suits in the tarot deck, there's a sword. Um, group of cards that, that all contain swords and that's a symbol of thinking and thinking is a dividing thing and where am I going with this I'm trying to help you see that thinking in and of itself will never encompass Pilates because it has that that connection in Pilates, there's this coordination between capacities. And you may get really smart and know everything about what Pilates is. Or you may know everything about what your view of Pilates is. Just like I have a view, you have a view. Everybody just has a view. And really, there is no hidden secret or hidden truth in the attic. There is no um, holy grail that actually comes out and explains it. The closest you ever get in Pilates, classically, is puzzle pieces. Well, and to the extent that, that Joe's book has enough of the pieces in it, to understand the picture that's on the pieces. I've been mixing a lot of metaphors here lately. Um, or at least casting them. Pilates is whole body. And I would think you get a lot of agreement among most of the Pilates culture on that. Understanding why it's important and how you get to it and what it's made up of is variable. Because everybody has their own point of view. And so, the fine thing. No, I didn't get to that. Show both. So, show both. I wish that, I wish that right underneath that so that it was in one image there were there were two pictures one of doing the plank on the reformer which is like here's an exercise that is out there in the world and all it takes is gravity to challenge yourself in a plank and then here's doing the plank on the reformer and then underneath it or perhaps above it further away from center further away in gravity you'd have you'd have the control push up front with kicks one arm if you could get away with it in control but probably not right when you know the ideal it totally reinforces the classical so your understanding of neoclassical Pilates and this view is Michael Miller Pilates in MMP which is neoclassical it takes the classical and transcends to the ideal that exists within it that's all but in this discussion this broadcast talking about doing control push up front and how in a different exercise where you're in high bridge going to one leg can be really tough and and yet for some not and knowing how to take it fewer contact points you know 
where do you take the classical um, when the classical is defined by history? Historical reenactments is one way to approach Pilates, and and it's a it's a, it's almost it's maybe a more comfortable womb to tuck itself in than the MMP womb of science. The great thing about MMP as a point of view and what it enables you to do is take what is ever familiar to your student and know how to take it further. Because if they walked in or even rolled in on a wheelchair or even somebody pushed them in but they're conscious and can move a little bit, They can engage themselves. And from that, <clears throat> I've never taught a lesson. Well, that's not true. That's not true. I was going to say, I've never taught a lesson using only sign language. <laughs> but there are, there are several people in, in Paris that would definitely think that sign language was the only thing I was using um, <clears throat> because of my club med French I was throwing around. But you have to offer any student, no matter where they're coming from, no matter who they are, or how long they've been doing it, or or any of the other stuff, right? Your awareness of MMP, your awareness of CT, are intricately connected in that CT came out of the pursuit of understanding Pilates, which became the point of view known as MMP. Right? And as evidenced by the Pilates culture, just because the shoe fits doesn't mean you have to wear it. The whole tsunami wave of passion is understandable because it's so, so, um, so much a part of our human nature and our interest in surviving. When in doubt, leave it out. That's what I want to type. I'm walking out the door on this on today's broadcast. And what I want you to, other than whatever else we talked about, when in doubt, leave it out. You know, I got that from Steve Giordano. And it's just as good wherever you got it from. And it becomes a great barometer about in, when you're an instructor. If you have doubt about what you're about to do or what you're thinking of going to do, right, don't do it. Come up with something else that you have left out about. Because why? Because it helps to know some words before you try to start stringing them together. And if you have doubt about how to even do the word, my point is there are lots of words in the dictionary. As my 
my DVD will hopefully help you see called The Mat is the Method. There's just within the dictionary of the 500 words of classical original Pilates exercise, exercises, just within that dictionary of words, when you perceive the grammar in which they exist, That's, that's, that sets you free. See, that sets you free. Because now you're not trying to learn about some, some blind objective that's unknowable and unattainable and, um, only, only delivered by permission and initiation, um, through the whim and whimsy of the judgment of others based on nothing but their whim and whimsy. I went looking for another way to say everybody. And all you really get back from the dictionary is every person. Every person. Which helps me at least make a distinction between everybody and every person. And in a way, everybody is a collective thing that to me is different than every person. A human being developed a message for every person. And it's a, a method of you want to condition yourself, you want to survive in this, in this place you call home, um, then condition yourself this way. Showboat. Showboat. And then, you know, make your mark while you can. Um, give back your joy to fulfill your duty as a human being. I don't think of it as give back. I think of you share your joy to fulfill a duty of, of being human, right? At least that's my take on it, and that's what empowers me to make a fool of myself so frequently for so long, and hopefully have uh, such a message of, of CT and MMP that... If you were binge watching and then wrote down everything that was inconsistent with what you were learning about or what you wanted to hear, I hope that would take you around the merit around enough to have you have your own grip on this point of view. To the point where someday you may even want an official association. May not be in my lifetime talk to the executors of my estate, but show what you know. Or at least, no, I don't know. That's not the way I say that. I say know what you know, right? Know what you know. Don't necessarily show what you know, but in some regards, if you're really trying to survive in the tsunami, By sharing whatever it is you share, your results will will speak for themselves. Right? Yeah, just teach. Be careful. Be very careful. Have insurance. Have them have insurance. Don't take it lightly. And don't ever don't ever think that things can't go wrong in the most familiar of circumstances. 
as they can and they do. Or even the most impossible to conceptualize. And I mentioned Steve once already. Steve once said that you can you can accidentally hook a clip to where it's it's not actually clipped all the way around, and that it's it's just clipped on the metal itself and could come off or go either way. And I remember in my mind thinking how easy it was to dismiss that as ever happening. Until I'm with a student and I'm, and I'm the one responsible, and I set up tension, and there that clip is just on the, me the metal and not gripping around the loop. So in that regard, use your eyes and your senses to confirm your presumptions when setting up equipment. I can't live forever. Thanks for listening. Have fun. Be careful. Read between the lines. There are only lines there if you put them. And it's where you put the lines and where you try to read between them where anything becomes distinguishable. See behind the curtain. It's all shadows going across the cave wall. Add two and two. Ramanujan. There's a movie about him. It's so wonderful. And, and is an inspiration for all of us to share our passion while we can. And another less a hard lesson about not being abused out of the interest in doing it. Period. I gotta retrieve my notes for the Facebook broadcast. Thank you. Ah, I'm at the point of director thinking. Christ.